how to have your dream skin. Trust me, it's attainable and you are more than worthy of having the complexion of your dreams. It's not that far away and you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to get there. So today I'm gonna to share with you all of my tips and tricks everything I do, especially at the end, I'll have just a few little lifestyle tweaks that you can do starting today and you'll see differences really, really soon. I'm talking probably within a week. So make sure you watch to the end. But first and foremost, I just want to say a quick hello. My name is Lauren O'Connell. I am the beauty editor at Cosmopolitan Middle East Magazine. I'm a 40 year old mom of two living in Dubai and I'm a master manifester. I can literally bring anything I want into my life. I have this formula, I use it, and I manifest crazy things. Actually, tomorrow I'm filming for a reality TV show, a very popular one that I guarantee you've heard about. I have producers texting me nonstop. I will let you know more about it probably when it's actually live on TV. But for now, I just don't want to get myself in trouble. So I'm not going to say anything else. But it was something I've always wanted to try to do, be on TV. So I've manifested that. Anyways, you can manifest things big or small, material, non-material, whatever you want, as long as it serves your highest good. Check out my uh, ebook. It's $29. It's on my website, planetlauren.com and it will immediately download into your device. Follow my formula, and as long as it serves your highest good, it is yours. So getting into this dream skin, first and foremost, before I start, yes, I'm 40, let's just talk about Botox, because I get the craziest comments all the time on different videos that, oh yeah, she's saying this and she's covered in Botox, or she's filled up with Botox. Right now, I have no Botox or any other neuromodulator, no injections in my face. The last time I got Botox was quite a while ago. I have had it before. I get baby Botox. It was probably last... I don't know. I want to say October. It was a long time. And I know this because when I smile, there are my little crow's feet coming out. And I can move my eyebrows any way I want to. The thing is, I just naturally don't move my eyebrows when I talk. I don't know why I'm like this, I just am. And no one has ever commented on it until now because I think people assume at this point my forehead should have a lot of lines in it and it doesn't. I just don't move my eyebrows when I talk, I'm not expressive. Someone on what a video just left a comment that I clearly have a ton of Botox and I've had a what was it? A blessed, a blessed ferocity? I can't remember what she said. I think she was referring to the uh, incision you get on your eyelids for a lift. I haven't had that either. I have not had any plastic surgery. So sorry to disappoint you. Right now my face is pretty much completely clear and I will be getting Botox soon. I like to use it as a preventative and I get 10 and 10 units here and I get 15 units here but right now there is nothing. <laughs> so first and foremost, it comes down to skincare ingredients. You can get as much Botox as you want. You can get, take as many lasers, do as much as you want to do to your face, but if your foundation isn't good, which is the skincare routine and also the ingredients in your makeup products, you are always going to be working, I guess I would say, against yourself. So you wanna be treat your skin like how you would treat your best friend. And you should also treat yourself how you wanna treat your best friend. I always treat myself so well in every single way. I used to not, I was always one of those people filled with horrible inner self dialogue, but that is a process to overcome. And not only do you wanna treat yourself well, but you wanna treat your skin well too. And that comes down to understanding skincare ingredients, makeup ingredients. There's ingredients that you want to put on your skin and then there's ingredients like fragrance or pro-drying alcohols that you want nowhere near your skin. So you have to start looking at the bottles when you're applying, when you're buying products, when you're online just looking to add things to your cart and seeing if these products actually are going to benefit your skin or not. In my 20s and even in my early 30s, I just assumed if something was from a well-known brand or if it had a high price tag, that meant it was good. And let me tell you, that is not the case. So you want, I have videos on all the ingredients to avoid. I have videos on the ingredients to use. So honestly, 
go around my channel, check out my different videos. There is a wealth of information. But for the skin, for your morning skincare routine, you wanna make sure you're always using a vitamin C serum. Vitamin C is really going to brighten the skin. It's going to smooth out fine lines and wrinkles, and it's going to also get rid of hyperpigmentation or at least minimize the appearance of it. There are so many different vitamin C derivatives, different types of vitamin C. My personal favorite is called THD ascorbate, and it is a very stable form of vitamin C, and it has just worked magic on my skin. I started using it about five years ago, and since then I've seen, and there's no filters on this video at all. There's no edits. I'm just in front of uh, big windows that are sliding glass door windows. Maybe you can see them in the reflection of my eyes, but there's no ring light or anything. So this honestly is just me. If you were right now in my bedroom with me, this is what you would see. But for the vitamin C, I found that it really just smoothed out the texture of my skin and it has really helped to fade any hyperpigmentation. I did have some hyperpigmentation. I went through a phase when I was in college I went to school in Worcester, Massachusetts, and being so pale, I just wanted to be hot. I wanted to be a hot girl. So I used to go to, I worked actually at a tanning salon, and I would put all this crap on my skin, these different God knows what was in those, those um, formulas, those creams I was using. I'd go into the, the tanning booth, and I don't even think I tanned in there. I think it was just those creams I was putting on had bronzers in them and they were bronzing me and I was just annihilating my skin. I didn't do it for long, only about a year, and then I stopped because I knew I, I knew I would regret it in the future and I knew my skin is just naturally fair. It burns, it doesn't tan, I'm not built for this, but it definitely did damage my skin and the vitamin C has really helped to minimize and just fade that discoloration. So vitamin C in the morning, it's going to be so important. It's gonna be one of your favorite ingredients to have in your skincare routine. And I do have videos both on my channel of my skincare routine and then another skincare routine that is has products, a morning skincare routine with all products under, I think it's under around $20. One vitamin C serum I've been using lately, and oh, this is my son, Jack. Hi. He's homesick from school. And I've been using this one recently. It's by Sunday Riley. It's the CEO 15% Brightening Serum. Now, if you've watched previous videos of mine, you know that I love the CEO Glow Oil by Sunday Riley. I ran out of it. I happen to have this in my beauty closet. I'm a beauty editor. I'm also a blogger, so I get lots of stuff constantly sent to me. So I thought, you know what, let me give this one a try. I will say I really loved it. It's a great product. I'm almost done with it, but I did just reorder my Sunday Riley CEO Glow Oil because I prefer that one instead. I have incredibly, incredibly, incredibly dry skin. So the thicker the products, the more oil-based the products, my skin just loves it, it drinks it up, and I just don't feel as much tightness in my face throughout the day. But this does have the THD ascorbate, and there's also a, oh, oh, right here, I think I actually have it right here. Yes, this a cure. now this one I would say is a lower price point. I'm pretty sure you can find this at Target. If you're in Dubai, you can find this at Watson's. This is a brand called Acure, and this is their brightening vitamin C and ferulic acid serum. This is a wonderful vitamin C serum. I believe this one also has a tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate, the THD ascorbate. Highly recommend you incorporate this into your skincare routine. This video, by the way, is not sponsored at all. You can find all the links down below for the products I'm talking about, and just know that I do get a small commission from anything that you choose to purchase, but if you don't wanna purchase anything, you don't feel obligated at all. It's just down there for you if you wanna do a little extra research or whatever, but these are two great serums. Personally, I prefer the CEO Glow Oil, but it, the, neither of these will set you down the wrong path. So aside from the vitamin C, just wanna mention there's one more product I pulled. This is a vitamin C eye serum. So this would go right underneath your eyes. If you have a lot of fine lines underneath your eyes, I do when I, if I didn't take such good care of my skin, I would have very much older looking eyes right now. 
but I definitely am prone to those fine lines with the dry, with my dry skin, the Dubai sun, and being 40, this is just part of the natural aging process. This is one you can also find in Target. This is the Andalou Naturals Luminous Eye Serum. It has vitamin C in it. It's wonderful for really just uh, minimizing those fine lines, hydrating the under eye area. And also if you have any hyperpigmentation, any discoloration underneath your eyes, it's going to minimize the appearance of that as well. What I like about eye serums is they're formulated to have very, very small molecules. So they're gonna penetrate deeper into your skin than a cream would to really work their magic. Next up is, let's see, which is the next one I wanna talk about. Oh, how about, uh, lactic acid. I'm a huge fan of lactic acid. Lactic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid. It's great for dry skin. If your skin is more on the oily side, you might want to take a look at glycolic acid, but lactic acid is going to really just uh, unglue those dead skin cells on your face. Those dead skin cells are going to sort of fall away and you're just going to have fresh skin revealed underneath. It has a secondary benefit too of adding more moisture to your skin. One thing that I think a lot of us who grew up in the 80s and the 90s, the 70s do is we just grew up always thinking that to exfoliate our skin, we needed to use a scrub. And that is sort of the outdated way of exfoliating. You don't want to use scrubs because if you were to take a microscope and look at the actual individual granule of the scrub that you're rubbing all over your face, you would find that it's very jaggedy, it has points, and it's going to create all these little micro tears on your skin. You might not see them or feel them, but they're there. And they're going to allow bacteria to get in, they're going to cause acne, redness, irritation, all of those things. So scrubs are out and the uh, chemical exfoliants are in. So get yourself some lactic acid and let me tell you, with consistent use, of course with all these ingredients, it's always consistent use, but when you do use it consistently, your skin is just going to appear so much smoother and it's going to be so beautifully exfoliated. You're going to have a lot less hyperpigmentation on your skin. It helps to get rid of hyperpigmentation. You're gonna have a more even skin tone. We also have retinol. We all know retinol and there are a few different retinols I wanted to point out to you. So my favorite retinol derivative, because retinols get confusing. There's so many different types. Some of them work right away. Some of them take a, more, a longer time to work and some are prescription strength. My favorite retinol derivative is called um, hydroxypenicolone retinoate, HPR. HPR is so good because it's a retinoic acid ester. That means when you put it on your skin, your body, the retinoic acid receptors in your skin are going to recognize it right away and it's going to bind to them and the retinol will start working. That means you're going to see the results faster. That's why I love, love, love HPR and I use it every single night. Personally, for me, prescription strength retinoid, like tretinoin, it's too harsh. It's not good for my skin. HPR has been an absolute dream for me. So I have three different products right here that all contain HPR. This one is by Mad Hippie. This one you can find in drugstores, on Amazon. I'll link it down below. I would say it's a lower price point than these ones. I do wanna say, I don't like to use words affordable and budget when I'm talking about the price of products just because what's affordable to one person isn't affordable to someone else. And I would never wanna say, oh, this is $10, this is so affordable, because for some people, $10 is a splurge. I've been there before. There were times where $10 was impossible for me to spend. So. Keep in mind, I just use words like lower price point and higher price point. I'm also not big on saying anti-aging. I hate to think of myself as anti-aging. I'm also not pro-aging. I'm just happy being where I am. You know, I, I always think to myself, there are women out there that had children that passed early on. They didn't even get to make it to 40. So why am I trying to anti-age myself at 40? I just feel like it's so disrespectful to my life, the journey I've been on in my life, and it's disrespectful to all those women who didn't get to make it, who didn't get to see their kids grow up, and I don't want to anti-age at all. They would do anything to switch spots with me. So for me, I am, 
I am content being where I am. I love being where I am. I'm grateful to be where I am. And I think of myself as just aging well. It's an honor to age. It really is. So why not just do it well? So Mad Hippie Vitamin A Serum, we also have Sunday Riley Luna Night Sleeping Oil. I like to use this one, it's blue, it has a blue dye in it, that I don't like, but the product itself does work great. And lastly is this Dermalogica Dynamic Skin Retinol Serum. This one is incredible, it has the HBR, it also has a retinol booster in it, and it has regular retinol as well. I recently did a campaign with Dermalogica on my Instagram, so I really studied the product, and it is chock full of amazing ingredients to really renew your complexion, to minimize those fine lines, and to just give you youthful, plumped up looking, healthy skin. So all of these retinols are incredible. And when you're looking for a retinol, try to find one that has that HPR. The HPR is the way to go, at least in my opinion. Of course, you can always talk to your dermatologist. I'm not a dermatologist. I am just a beauty editor, not just, but I'm a beauty editor. I'm a beauty expert, I would say, a skincare freak. I have a degree in biomechanical engineering. That was from my parents. <laughs> they told me I had to do it. And then I have a master's of science in nursing. So the techie, the sciencey side of skincare is just so interesting to me. I love to know what ingredients really do work to just give that dream skin. So next up, I'll, the last ingredient I wanna, I guess, touch on right now, there are more. Well, there's two more. I'm just gonna say both. First one is peptides. Peptides are incredible. What peptides are going to do are, they're, they're gonna firm your skin. And when you put a peptide, a product of peptides on your skin, like this one, this is the Drunk Elephant Polyproteiny Peptide Cream. What's going, oh, I'm sorry, Proteiny Polypeptide Cream. What happens is the peptides, once they're on your skin, a signal gets sent to your brain that there's an injury at that site. So then your brain starts this whole process of creating more collagen. Your body starts to create more collagen at that site, because of the injury. So more collagen is going to give us firmer skin and that's why I love to use peptides in my skincare routine. I've been using peptides now for probably about five years. When I turned 35, I sort of had this big shift in how I approach my skincare and I really started to look at the ingredients. So I guess how I look now is five years later. And I will say before, I had much more pronounced fine lines on my face. I My eyes were really crinkling when I'd smile, especially underneath. Not so much here, like where this is new, but underneath here it was, it was pretty pronounced. I had, I hate the name marionette lines. I know people call them different things, but these lines here were quite pronounced. So using all these ingredients have in these products have really transformed my skin. And of course you wanna make sure you're always hydrating and moisturizing. You have to use in products that contain emollients, uh, occlusives, and what else? Emollients, occlusives, and hydrators. So you wanna use in ingredients like hyaluronic acid is the one that of course everyone talks about shea butter is great squalene is incredible our bodies naturally produce squalene jack can come back here for a second honey i want to show off your squalene <laughs> our bodies naturally produce squalene and it's a natural moisturizing factor and or i'm sorry it's called squalene and what happens is when we turn around 25 years old, the amount of squalene our bodies produce starts to drastically decline. And that's, you don't notice it right away, but eventually around maybe 30, I remember when I turned 30, some of my girlfriends started saying, oh my gosh, I'm starting to look so old. And part of that was that there wasn't as much squalene in the body. So we can replace that with squalene. Honey, don't move my seat. We can replace that with squalene and we just put it, apply it to our skin topically and it's going to sink into our skin and really just plump it up. A cleanser that I love is this one by The Ordinary. This is their squalene cleanser. This is amazing for maturing skin. Not only does it cleanse the skin well, but it is squalene based. So it's going to just infuse the skin with that wonderful plumping ingredient. And not only is your skin going to look healthier and just glowier, more radiant, and more supple. But at the same time, if you have dry skin like me, your face isn't going to feel like it's gonna crack in half every time you're smiling or talking to someone, especially as the day goes on and on. Now, Jack, come here, I wanna show off your squalene. Come here, honey. 
So this is my son, Jack. He's 11 and he's full of squalene. Look at that cute face. Lots of squalene there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You're, you know, you're, this isn't the behavior of someone who's sick. <laughs> I think it's more of a personal day. So aside from the ingredients, you do want to also make sure that you're using makeup products with the correct ingredients as well. You can have a killer skincare routine, but then if you're putting on a foundation with drying alcohols, you're putting uh, different products on your face that are going to actually kind of reverse a little bit of the skincare you just did, that would be pointless. So when you're looking at your foundations, make sure that you're not using anything that has alcohol or denatured alcohol or SD alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and you don't wanna use anything that contains fragrance either. Fragrance is a mystery ingredient because the cosmetic company doesn't need to disclose what is actually in that fragrance. It's called a trade secret. But within that fragrance ingredient, there could be all those drying alcohols. There could be other things that we don't want on our skin, different types of preservatives we don't want on our skin. So avoid anything with fragrance. And Jack is right now. <laughs> all right, so this is cute, but mommy needs to finish this video, yeah. so come on. So we also just wanna make sure that it's, what am I saying? With the fragrance, you want to also avoid anything with endocrine disruptors. This is something that I'm really studying more and more, and it's the hormone disruptors. I have a girlfriend who is literally obsessed with hormones. She loves hormones. <laughs> she talks about them all the time. So now I'm doing tons of research on hormones because she always puts these little, she always will say one little thing that puts a thought in my head and I think, oh, I need to Google that. I'm someone that's Googling things constantly. And there are a lot of ingredients out there that just seem to be not the best for women's bodies. I'm going to have a video coming up soon about endocrine disruptors, but you wanna make sure that you're just using formulas that are going to enhance your skin as well as your wellness. Now, Why did okay. It turn off? okay, you need to stop now. Why did right. it turn off? Because mommy has to charge it, I've used it too much. All right, can you please go now? I also do wanna point out being super duper pale as I am, I've stopped using self tanner. I used to be someone that constantly doused myself in self tanner, self tanner. And back then they weren't the best. I was pretty orange, but I thought I looked super hot. But the thing is a lot of those self tanners, when I look at the ingredients in them, they are just going to age your skin. They are gonna destroy the skincare you're doing. Not to say that they all are, there are some that are okay, but a lot of them just have those ingredients like alcohol and they have it because it's going, because alcohol is a skin penetration enhancer. It's a very cheap one. It means it's going to help to pull the ingredients deeper into the skin. And for something like a self tanner, you know, you want to have that tanner sink in. So naturally you would think, okay, a company would put alcohol in there. They could put other ingredients, but those ones are more expensive and they go the cheaper route. And I just think that they're horrible, horrible for the skin. When I stopped using them, my skin just really improved. So I'm not saying you don't have to use them, but just look at the ingredients in that product and see if there's anything in there, like the ones I just said. You can look at other videos I have, but which are much more detailed on ingredients and just see like, what are you actually putting on your skin? I do, I did also cut out alcohol and I know that that's gonna make some people spit out their coffee, which I've cut that out too. But when I cut out alcohol, oh my gosh, not only did I feel a lot better, but my skin instantly looked, I mean, really it was instantly just looked so much better. I also cut out caffeine and both of those ingredients, both of those uh, drinks were ones that I loved to consume. I would have at least one or two cappuccinos every day and I would have a glass of wine or two or three <laughs> at nighttime, not every night, but I did it often. And my skin just instantly became so much more hydrated, looked so much more plumped, and it really just looked healthier. And I felt that for me, cutting those ingredients out were something that I needed to do because I'm in a, place in my life right now where I really need to be focused and I need to have laser focus. And although you think of caffeine as sort of giving you a pick me up, 
on in the end it does bring you down and so i just needed to not have anything to that would be affecting both i guess you would say my inner and my outer uh, mind body and soul so i cut out both of those it wasn't easy it was hard to do when i cut out the caffeine i actually had spasms in my hips for a few nights that was a crazy feeling and the alcohol was okay. I was ready just to let it go. I also am a big meditator and I'm big on journaling, meditating. I'm very spiritual. And as you kind of go on your spiritual journey, naturally you sort of let some things just fall behind. And for me, one of those was alcohol. So those are no longer a part of my life. Now, when it comes, so that's the skincare part of it. Now, if you do wanna talk a little bit about lasers and Botox, I know quite a bit about that, and red light therapy. So that was what Jack just had, and I do need to charge my mask. I have been using it lately. Uh, you can see it just had a quick look. That little, I'm just pressing a button, and when it just flashes, it means charge me. But I do have a video on all the different home devices, and this is the only one that I personally think is worth purchasing. And that's just because I found that with a lot of them, I just won't use them. And it sounds silly, but you have to use them to have them work. And it's hard to really commit yourself sometimes to 15 minutes a day, especially if you're busy with your career, if you have kids, if you have both of those things going on, if you have a dog, you have to carve out that time every day and we don't necessarily always have that time. The one that I do like is this current body and I like it just because it's flexible. I can put it on. I can even walk around if I need to and it does what I need it to do and it's just not something that requires me to sit still. I still have free range of my hands, which is important because I'm always doing something else. I'm a multitasker and so for me, this one was the best. This was gifted to me by Current Body a long time ago, so just keep that in mind. They recently sent me one for the neck and chest as well. I haven't even opened the box yet. I've been so busy. I will soon though, but if you are looking for one, I suggest checking this one out. And the red light therapy, sorry, I should have said this, is going to help to increase your collagen. So you're going to have firmer skin, more youthful skin. And you know, what happens is as we get older, the amount of collagen in our face just declines. And that's when we can just start to, I guess, look older. So if you want to not fight that, I hate that word, but if you want to slow that process down, using a mask like this, an LED, is going to help you with that. And it's going to keep your collagen it's gonna keep your collagen up to the level that you may have had it in your 30s and your 20s, depending on how you use it. Of course, you can always check with your dermatologist to make sure that it is the right option for you. And think of me as just someone that you would be having lunch with and you said, Lauren, what are things to do to get my dream skin? And I just started going on and on and on. Think of me that way. I'm just, I'm an expert, a beauty expert. I'm a beauty editor and I just live for this stuff. So there's also laser treatments. Now I've had quite a few laser treatments. One part of my job, it's a perk of my job. I have so many aesthetic clinics always messaging me saying, come in, come in, we'll do Morpheus 8, we'll do picogenesis, we'll do all these lasers to you. So in the past, I have had Morpheus 8, I've had it twice. It is painful, but I personally think it's worth it. I had it in October last. And it's a going to, it combines micro needling with radio frequency. And it's going to really just help to eradicate those fine lines. It tightens the skin like crazy. And it's going to smooth and even out your skin tone. I have also had picogenesis. Now, if you're someone who was a sun worshiper and you have a lot of age spots, a lot of sunspots on your skin, picogenesis might be the way you want to go. What it's going to do is help to eradicate all of that hyperpigmentation. And even if you have hyperpigmentation that's not showing yet, it's sort of deep within your skin, it brings it to the surface and it's going to then slough off and your skin's going to look a lot clearer, your skin tone, I should say. I have had picogenesis, I think two or three times over the last maybe four years. And I remember the first time I had it, there were these little black dots on my face. And I said to the laser technician a few days later, I DM'd her, I said, what is this? And she said, I told you they were deep within your skin. You probably wouldn't have seen them until five years from now. 
but they really do clear up the skin. You can get it on your chest as well. I have had it, I believe I had it on my arms once. No, I don't think I did. I had BBL. BBL is broadband light. And that's another one to just really give you a very radiant complexion and to minimize the hyperpigmentation. There's also one called Moxie. I've had so many different ones. And while they all kind of do the same thing, you wanna to talk to your laser technician or your doctor, whoever is your healthcare provider, and see which one works best for you. So, But when I say I've had all these different lasers, I have had probably in my life lasers maybe six or seven times, and I've had them over the course of about five years. So I'm not getting it all the time, but I do like to get it sometimes. I am big, big, big on SPF. I didn't mention that earlier in the ingredients because I wanted to give it its own place. And SPF, let me tell you, that is going to be the number one thing you have to do for your skin. Every single day, I put SPF all over my entire body. And I mean, my arms, my chest, my neck, literally everywhere. And I wear it even when I'm inside because the UVA rays, which are the ones that silently age us, they are the ones that are going to create all that pigmentation and to destroy our collagen. They can even penetrate through window glass. You might find studies or people saying, oh, it's not that much. Let me tell you, since I started wearing SPF inside, my skin has looked a lot Clearer. And I do remember one time I was at the dermatologist just having a consultation and she said to me, do you wear SPF inside? And I said, no. And she said, Lauren, you need to start doing this. That was in my 20s. And so I did. And I think it has helped me tremendously. The UVB rays are the ones that are going to burn our skin. So there's UVA and UVB rays. I do want to say that when you buy a sunblock, you wanna make sure you're getting something that is a broad spectrum sunscreen. That means it's going to protect you against the UVA and the UVB. And there's mineral sunblocks and there's chemical sunblocks. Personally, I like to use the chemical sunblocks. They sink into your skin and as the skin absorbs those UVA and UVB rays, they are turned into heat, a chemical reaction occurs and the heat dissipates from your skin. For me, this is the better option because the other one is mineral, which is going to just act like a shield that goes on your face. But the problem is that if you start to sweat, if you go swimming, if you get wet, anything, it's gonna slide off and then your skin's exposed. And for me, living in Dubai, I also work out quite a bit and doing everything I do, I just cannot deal with only using mineral. My, it would, my skin would be damaged. So for me, chemical is the best option. Whenever I get in the car, I put SPF on the back of my hands right away. And I'm actually gonna go grab the tool, the, the, the product I used to show you. So just to quickly show you, the SPF that I use on my body and my face every single day is this one. It's a super goop play everyday lotion and I really like the ingredients in it. It's also very emollient, it's very moisturizing. So my skin feels great, I use it as a lotion. And the glow stick is what I put on my hands. Now, what I do is it's just like a stick like this. I literally keep one in so many of my purses. During the winter months, I leave it in my car. In the summer months, I can't because it will melt. But I just always rub it on the back of my hands as soon as I get in the car before I put on, after I put on my seatbelt, but uh, before I start driving. And I just get myself into the habit of doing this. So, you know, on days where I'm driving a lot, my hands are constantly being uh, renewed with uh, the protection on my hands is constantly being renewed with the sunscreen, which is great because I do wash my hands a lot too. My son also is just one of those kids. He hates sunblock and he fights me nonstop when I try to put it on him. He loves this one and he likes that he can do it himself. So I got one for him and he just puts it on his face and he'll, you know, do it all over his face. I've also have him using this one, but lately he is saying to me, mom, I prefer this one more, but I do make him use this one in the morning. And then as the day goes on, when he reapplies, he'll use this. And he usually mostly does that. Sorry, I think the, my thing's a bit overexposed here. Um, he usually does that uh, when days we go to the water park, we go to a water park every Saturday as just something to do as a family and to keep the kids 
away from screens. I do want to say when I do go to the water park and to, I don't know how it would work with the beach. I don't go to the beach that often just because I am so fair and I just, I don't know, I guess I've never really been a huge beach person, but on days where I'm going to get a lot of sun, I have a jacket that's a, U, a um, UV 50 protection jacket, and I actually have pants as well. It's called a burkini, and here in Dubai, a lot of Muslim women, they don't want to wear, or they don't wear a, swim, a traditional swimsuit when they go to the beach or to a water park. So instead they wear a burkini and it's literally pants and a long sleeve shirt, but it's made of this amazing material that protects the skin. So when I'm there, I have a burkini on. I don't cover my hair because I'm not Muslim, but I cover up to here and then I am constantly readjusting my face and my hands and I do reapply it to my body to the sunblock, but it just really protects my skin. Now, this is something I would not have done when I was 35, when I was 30, but I feel like at 40, I don't really care. I've been married now for so long. I think, I don't even know how long I've been married. I should know this. I got married in 2006. It's, all right, 17 years will be this year. And I, I just, I don't care about the male gaze. So for me, the burkini just works great. <laughs> so sunblock always burkini. And I will show you one other thing that I have. Now, my one vice left in life is my nails. You can see I have the gel nails. And unfortunately, Dubai has not caught up to the US when it comes to the LED lights because they still have the UV ones here. So I have these UV gloves that I wear when I go to the nail salon. And I actually just yesterday bought driving gloves. I'm gonna start wearing them. If they're good, I'll let you know where I got them from so you can get them too. But they have the driving gloves have some, uh, you know, grip here. But I wear these, these are UV. I still wear my sunblock underneath. And that way I know it's not perfect. I know I'm still getting some damage to my skin, but I have to imagine that this does provide me some protection. So these are UV gloves, bought these right off Amazon. Now you can also do for dream skin, you can do fillers if you wanted to and Botox. I would say though that to use those sparingly, and that's something that I do, Actually, I wouldn't say that. I would say use it to to what you feel comfortable with. You know, don't don't think oh sparingly means sparingly is going to mean something different for everyone. If you need to have a, if you feel that you want to have a lot of units on your face, that's fine. I would say just with whatever you do when it comes to injectables, don't go overboard because you want to look like just a healthier version of yourself. You don't need to morph your beauty into by someone else's standard. You don't need to look like anyone else. That's something I do see quite often out here. And I think it's just honestly unnecessary because in my opinion, every woman is made to look the way she's made to look and she is beautiful in her own right. You never need to think to look at anyone else and think that you want their face because honestly your face is perfect and there is no reason to ever you know really adjust your features just to fit into someone else's mold but like i said i do get some botox i get 10 units on the side here and i get 15 units here and i don't have any right now and i only really am getting it as a preventative and i just get it just a little bit now and then whenever i feel like i need it i will be getting it soon because my uh doctor messaged me and said hey you know you're really overdue and I've just been busy, so I will go get it soon, but I don't have any on my face right now. Now, two other things I wanted to uh, touch on for Dream Skin. First one is your diet. What are you consuming? And I'm not only just talking about food, but what is the, you know, one thing that I feel is never talked about is how what we expose ourselves to internally, how that affects us, and it does affect us. So what's your diet in terms of what media are you consuming? You know, what, who are you listening to on YouTube? What podcasts are you listening to? What type of music are you listening to? Now, I'm not saying that you're going to have dream skin all of a sudden if you stop listening to a certain type of music at all, but when you start to really clean up your diet, 
you're going to see a difference in how you feel and how you look. And that I firmly believe. Also with the foods that you eat, I drink a ton of water. I've always drank a ton of water. I don't drink any alcohol. I've stopped drinking caffeine and I feel like my skin is just looks so much better for it. And not only does my skin look better, but I feel better. When I feel better, I also make better choices. I always make better choices for myself when I have a clear head and I eat more whole foods. I have a wonderful video on the skin smoothie that I drink every morning. It is delicious and it just is chock full of antioxidants and so many wonderful skin loving ingredients that I look forward to drinking it every single morning. When I wake up, I'm always like, oh my gosh, it's already morning. Oh, but I get to have my smoothie. So I'm going to get out of bed and start making that smoothie. I love my skin smoothie. Check out that video. I'm sure you'll love it too. But I also like to eat whole foods. I have always struggled with protein and that's because I feel like I'm a natural born, probably vegetarian or vegan, but I feel like my body needs protein and I don't wanna always eat tons of carbs. So I do eat chicken sometimes. I will eat some seafood sometimes. Recently, I've gotten back into it. I didn't for probably the last, I don't know, eight months, but I started to feel like I was I, I just wasn't feeling like myself. I wasn't feeling that energy and I lift weights. And to, when you lift weights, you have to eat protein. So it's a sort of a struggle I've had, but when I do eat the protein, I will say my skin looks a lot better. And I have started drinking some collagen as well, and it's a marine-based collagen, and that's going to really just give me that plumped up skin. So it what you eat is a big part of it. And if you are someone who's vegan or vegetarian, there are ways around it. If you have any great recipes or tips, let me know because I'm always looking for them but it is something that I do struggle with. And I would love to, honestly, I would love to be a vegan just because I don't want to, um, I just don't wanna eat animals, but at the same time, I feel like my body needs it. But whatever you do choose to eat, that is your choice. I would never, ever, ever push that on anyone else. Trust me, I live in a house full of carnivores, but for me personally, I am finding that when I eat the more protein, it's just, I just, my skin looks so much better. And also I feel better and it's good for my muscles, which is very important, especially heading into that perimenopause phase. I just keep coming across so much information and uh, some of my girlfriends are going through perimenopause and menopause and everyone's saying the number one thing is you got to be lifting weights to mm -hmm. just keep your body as healthy as possible. So I have started lifting weights. I have a tiny bit of a muscle now. I'm starting to see it. So, uh, you know, that's part of it. I do also take a multivitamin every day and I am always making sure that my vitamin B, my vitamin D, and oh, what's the other one? Oh, and my iron are, the levels are, you know, up to par. So I do get blood work done once every about three months just to make sure that everything I'm but that everything that needs to be my, in my body is in there and I'm getting all the nutrients that I need. So lastly, I have just a few little quick trips, quick uh, tips that if you start doing them today, you can do all three today, you will see a difference in your skin within a week, I promise you. Number one is you have to change your pillowcase every night. If every night isn't possible, do it every other night, but changing that pillowcase is huge because during the night you get oils from your hair, your oils from your face, any dirt, any uh, sweat, grime gets stuck on that pillowcase. If you're like me and you have kids, your kids are probably sitting on your bed during the day you know, looking at their iPads or whatever, and who knows what's on their clothes or if they're even wearing clothes. <laughs> so what's touching your pillows? So you wanna make sure that you just are sleeping on a clean surface. So change your pillowcase every night. I do like using silk pillowcases as well. They're great for the skin. Again, I have that cruelty issue because silk, the way that they get the silk is not uh, pleasant for these little silk worms. Some of my friends laugh at me. They're like, Lauren, they're just worms. But I, I just, I, it's who I am. It's just who I am. But silk is a great option or just a very soft cotton. Did you never uh, say worms are just worms? Okay. Jack, stop. 
There's also a uh, no scalding hot shower. So if you're somebody that just loves those hot showers, I'm so sorry, but they are not good for your skin. Try to have just warm water instead, or thank you, Jack, or, you know, very warm water, but the scalding hot showers, you have to stop doing that. It's very stripping to your skin and you want your skin just to, you know, feel as plump and healthy and keep your natural moisture within your body. So cut out those scalding hot showers. And when you're in the shower, you also wanna make sure that you're washing your hair first and washing your face last. That's because you don't wanna wash your face and then wash your hair because then you're gonna have suds going down your face. They can stay there and you just don't wanna have those hair ingredients on your skin. So always just wash your hair first and then if stuff does get on your face, that's okay because you're going to do your cleansing routine. If it's nighttime, your double cleansing routine, which consists of using an oil-based cleanser followed by a water-based cleanser to just really get everything off your face, the sweat, the dirt, the makeup, the SPF, the skincare, the dust, the grime, and whatever else comes into contact with your skin that day. You wanna just get all of that off your face so your skin is perfectly cleansed. And when it is, then all those great ingredients you're gonna put on your skin are going to infuse into your skin properly. So make sure you just always wash your face last just in case you have any residual soap, uh, shampoos or conditioners on it. You wanna just get everything off. And those are all my tips for having your dream skin. And while maybe you don't want to to go into the laser and the Botox area because they're really quite expensive. It's okay, you can forego those, just get down on that skincare. And remember, I do have a morning and an evening skincare routine where all the products are under, I think it's $20. There's one product I think that's $23.99, but I did my best to find the best ingredients and products that I would use. And I do have all those products and I have used them. I do also have my normal skincare routine, on my channel as well. So take a look around those videos and I hope you feel inspired. I hope you found this informative and helpful and yeah, there's gonna always be more content. So don't forget to subscribe to me. And in the meantime, I will click you over to my morning skincare routine, the one with the lower price point.